Hello, my name is Ian Bruce. I would like to share highlights of our manuscript reporting the degree of concordance between different clinical outcome measures in a pooled analysis of three phase two or three trials of anafrolumab in patients with SLE. Anafrolumab is a monoclonal antibody targeting the type 1 interferon signaling pathway and is approved in several countries for the treatment of patients with moderate to severe SLE alongside standard therapy. As SLE affects many different organ systems, efficacy assessments for SLE therapies often use composite indices of global lupus disease activity, such as the BILAG-based Composite Lupus Assessment, or BICLA, and the SLEDA-based SLE Responder Index 4, or SRI4. Clinical trial responses to anafrolumab were investigated in patients with SLE in the Phase 2b MUSE trial and the Phase 3 TULIP1 and TULIP2 trials using both the BICLA and the SRI4 indices. Looking at week 52 data across all three trials, the BICLA responses when used as a primary or secondary endpoint consistently favored anafrolumab. The SRI4 outcome at week 52 favored anafrolumab in both MUSE and TULIP2. However, in TULIP1, the treatment difference between anafrolumab and placebo with SRI4 did not achieve statistical significance. The purpose of this analysis was to assess the degree of concordance between BICLA and SRI4 across anafrolumab trials and to determine whether a subgroup of patients with discordant BICLA and SRI4 outcomes could be identified that may explain the lack of significant SRI4 treatment difference in TULIP1. To our knowledge, this is the first analysis into discordance of BICLA and SRI4 responses. This was a post hoc analysis of pooled data from patients with SLE who received intravenous anafrolumab 300 milligrams or placebo every four weeks for 48 weeks in the randomized double blind 52 week MUSE, TULIP1 and TULIP2 trials. Patients were grouped by concordance on BICLA and SRI4 outcomes. Across the three trials, 75 to 58 percent of patients in all groups assessed had concordant BICLA and SRI4 responses. The proportion of patients who were dual responders was higher in all trials in patients receiving anafrolumab 300 milligrams compared to placebo. In TULIP2 and MUSE, the pattern of discordance was generally similar across treatment groups. However, in TULIP1, more patients receiving placebo than anafrolumab were BICLA non-responders and SRI4 responders, thus reducing the overall TULIP1 SRI4 treatment effect by 8.5 percentage points. This subgroup in total consisted 11% of the TULIP1 population. Patients from TULIP1 who had SRI4 response without BICLA response were then investigated in more detail. Those who received placebo had lower baseline SLEDA 2K scores and joint counts than those who received anafrolumab, and fewer placebo patients had no A and greater than or equal to 2B by like 2004 scores at baseline. These imbalances were not observed in any of the other TULIP1 or TULIP2 subgroups. Despite these differences, the proportion of patients who were able to taper their glucocorticoid dose was also lower in the placebo group, although results should be interpreted with caution given the small group sizes. Looking at the SRI4 response characteristics, 79% of placebo-treated patients in this subgroup attained an SRI4 response as a result of their arthritis response, which alone provides four points on the SLEED A and is therefore sufficient to attain an SRI4 response. In contrast, domain improvements that led to SRI4 responses showed more variation in the anafrolumab group. Looking at BICLA non-response, patients in this subgroup were BICLA non-responders 
because they had moderate or severe organ involvement that had not resolved. And the most common reason was a lack of improvement in BILAG 2004 rash. Putting these together overall, the combination of Bicola non-response due to rash and SRI4 response due to arthritis occurred in 71% of placebo treated and 42% of anafrolamab treated patients. In conclusion, therefore, most patients in this pooled data set had concordant Bicola and SRI4 outcomes and anafrolamab had more patients that met both the Bicola and SRI responses, i.e. were dual responders. A Bicola non-responder SRI4 responder subgroup was identified in the TULIP1 population in which there are imbalances such as resolution of arthritis and differences in glucocorticoid tapering that likely drove this discordance in favour of placebo. Careful attention is therefore needed to baseline disease activity and monitoring glucocorticoid taper variation in future SLE trials. Thank you very much for your attention to this important data. Thank you.